Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Chassidus in the Morning, 15 minutes to change our lives. Let's see, we're not, I don't think we're going to finish today the whole, whole, like, section of the Sikha. We'll keep on going, but I think we'll just keep on going and we'll see where we get. So we started discussing yesterday the difference between um, Mayim, Mayim, Darim, Yom, sorry, Yom, Darim, and Yerusha. And this was one of the, one of the brachas that were given. And what does it mean spiritually? So we said, Yom means the, the sea. And we talked about the sea. It's a specific time and place. It's on the, it's on the west. Now it says the Shekhinah of Amarov, that the Shekhinah is in the west. So it's a level of godliness, but it's a level, a limited level of godliness. And then we also had, we talked about the, that was the Yom, the Darim. Um, the Darim was a level of, of also godliness, but it was, it was more, it was also limited. And then you have the Yerusha. Yerusha is unlimited. Back to the, and, and it's sort of bringing out from a different place, from a different uh, context, but the same idea. That you have a level of relationship between you and Hashem that is coming with a limitation, and that's ultimately coming from you, from your level of understanding, and that's the that's the dependency of the relationship. And then there's a deeper level which is coming from like the Yerusha, the inheritance. Like we said yesterday, that's one of the reasons why there, you know, one of the one the twelve one of the twelve pesukim, and this really applies for all the pesukim. At every pasuk, there's it's it's not just you know. I was fortunate when I was a kid; I learned these pesukim. But I didn't learn what they mean. I just learned how to say them. And I grew up saying, you know, I said these 12 psukim, you know, and you go to a Tzivah Hashem rally, you go whatever, any rally in Chabad, and you see you say 12 psukim. But who do I know what it means? And then, only like recently, a few years ago, started to understand that, I, hey, there's like meaning behind these psukim, not just psukim, and they're ever chose, whatever, they're ever psukim, but there's actually a teichen in psukim, and these psukim actually, they're ever trying to what these are the psukim that a kid should learn and understand because they're the foundation of living a successful Yiddish Chassidish life, living a proper Jew, the proper foundations. These top psukim are the foundations of Judaism for kids, for all of us, but but even even kids. So then the first one is The first thing we need to know is the Torah is ours. Kid, he look he looks at you and he says. He comes to your shiva, let's say, and he walks around. He says, Torah's not mine. You have to go learn for 20 years. You have to become a bach in your shiva to, to earn Torah. So the verb says, the verb is teaching us. Bring down, it's not, it's the Torah is teaching us. The verb is bringing it out. The first thing he needs to know is the Torah is his. His or hers. It's, 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 they, it, they earn it. They don't have to do anything. They didn't, they didn't earn it. They didn't do something. They inherit it. What's an inheritance? Like we're saying here, inheritance is way above and beyond. We're family. We are born to Hashem. We are sons to Hashem. Our God, that's ours. So now let's go continue on. Continuing on what we're saying. Tess, I they mama gim le yerusha. I they were discussing. So, Mister says, how do we get yerusha in the simple sense of what we're talking about? This is again to the kabbalah zol. Mister is never to love Israel and give us a love to Israel. Like I said before, I think we said yesterday, the day before that that the Rebbe said, what does it mean, Aveda? All that the done and picking up all the um, all the leftovers, and we said ultimately it means it means a guy can be a guy or a girl can be connected close to the mishkan, meaning their davening is good, their learning is good, they give to doctor, do all the right things, but it's lacking. But it could be very much lacking their um, the kabbalah, so the ma. So then they're, they're, they're missing everything. That's that's sort of the foundation. So, so, so to here, I was saying, how do you get this Yerusha? How do you reach that level? The level which is, we said, is above and beyond. That is, like we said before, it's Kabbalah, so, Mr. Nefesh, Avashi, so, but specifically to Avashi, so, to carry about someone else. Came out another year. Kavai, who's the level? We already explained before. Shai, every day, Shai, Pidam, Vidas, Eshelah, Sigil, Kus, Rak, Minim, Mugbalas. Because when you say Hashem, based off reasoning and intellect and what makes sense, and what is Gishmak, and what is, um, Connected to you, what we enjoy, so then it's going to be limited. But if in Yechasi the 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 Gdula Sichle, the fee of Shariusay, the Hasig, 
because it will be ultimately limited to the way the amount that we can understand that we can grasp. That's how connection is going to be. And you could say that's with uh, every type of relationship. If we, if the approach of the relationship, like it says, pretty obvious. Um, to live a love that's dependent on something. You lose that thing. You lose that love. You say I love you because uh, because you do good things to me. So good things to me. I stop loving you. And that's what we're saying. If I love to admit why because it's geschmack, so then it's not geschmack. I don't love it anymore. And that's sort of the point. And we say we have to change our, our perspective in terms of mitzvahs. Why am I doing this mitzvah? Am I doing it because it's geschmack? Am I doing it because this is what God wants? And that's what we're saying. And so too, we talked about this also at the beginning of the week. So too, with the relationship, husband and wife. Why do I do things for you? Because you make you feel good. I got all this a few weeks ago, but uh, let me finish this and then we'll say this story again. I feel like about us all. He... Whereas Kabbalah's Earl is because Hashem is unlimited. It's about, it's about Hashem, it's not about me. Being that this idea of inheritance exists amongst all the Jewish people. But this Yerusha, this inheritance is there, but it can be hidden. Like we said before, but what's the fool? The one that loses everything. It loses the ma. Like I said, that the ma, that the bit of Hashem is lost. So he has to go get it back. But here, like, the Kabbalah by the way, the Gilui. As Kabbalah comes to Revelation. Um, so, what, so just a quick story to, to react this idea. I remember I once heard the story. That there was a uh, in the in the in the I don't know what this exactly is called the watchtower by the airport. It's a very important job, and they 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 monitor all the planes coming in and out. And so the guy was radioing to the pilot, and he said to him, "By the way, my my girlfriend is on the plane, and I want to propose." Well, she's on the plane. He's in the tower. She's on the, she's on the in the plane, but he has connection to the plane through the pilot. And, and to the whole plane, the pilot can put it on the on the screen, on the microphone. So he's like, yeah, I chicken out. So the pilot's like, no, no, do it, do it. You're on, you're on speaker. Go, go say it. So the guy can't see anything. He's just saying what he wants to say. And he hopefully will go, I got. So he says, and this is something that like, like pained me a lot. He goes, he goes, um, whatever her name was, uh, Shelly. He goes, Shelly, since the first time I met you, you made me feel so good. And it would like be my honor if I can spend the rest of, time, the rest of my life with you. Like, life is so much more enjoyable with you. And so everyone got happy, everyone enjoyed it. And I was like, it so pained me when I first heard I was like, but I didn't like, and I was thinking about it, like, why did it bother me so much? And I realize he's saying, he's saying my life, I I enjoy, like I gain from you being my life. I like you, not not you as you who you are. You as what you give me. You are like uh, good food. I love good food, so I want to buy good food in my life. I want to have good food in my life. I don't love you. I love what you're doing for me. And 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 this is sort of what I'm saying when it comes to Yiddishkeit and it comes to everything. It comes to the marriage as well. That is, is our approach to marriage. Ah, oh, you make me good. Make me, you bring in a lot of money, so it makes you feel good. So I, so I, I like you. And ultimately, of course, the the marriage is based off you know two halves of one soul. We're both halves, and then we're getting married. We're, we're, we're trying to reuniting that half. So I, I'm married to you. Yeah, of course, when you're going shidduchim, you have to figure out the right person. But once you're getting married, once you're married. Why are we married? Because we're, the, we're, we're a soul. We're connected. <laughs> Not because of what we do for each other, because of who we are. We're the other part of our soul. And everything that I do is, is connected with you and you do connect with me. And, and, and this is what we're saying. When it comes to our connection with Hashem, if it doesn't have Kabbalah's son, it's about what I enjoy, the Shemak. So he's saying, I don't like you. I don't like term, term mitzvahs. I don't like Hashem. I like what that makes me feel. I enjoy... Can I, doing a mitzvah because that makes you feel good. And there, this is what we're saying. Yud. 
And we have Asher Machnadan. He was in the middle. So you have Asher, which is sort of the beginning of our discussion. That uh, we said in the beginning, from remember the beginning of the week, that Asha was, that it said he was blessed with a lot of oil. And, and Rashi brings down the, the Moshe's blessing to him. His feet will, will be stepping in oil. But even the feet, and this is how we got up to this Kabbalah Zod, even the feet, which is the lowest level, steps in the oil, where oil is Chachma. What does that mean? And like we said, like we've been talking about the whole week, we're having, having to have the Kabbalah Zod. Now back to Asha. But then we got sidetracked, we're done. So now we're going back to Asha. Then we're going to ask We've been, we've been around the Shvatim over here. So we see by Asher, he was in the middle, which is Bepnimius Shiverego. This is the inner part of the Rego. He's down the back, but he's, but he's in the, but not all in the back. So what does that mean? The Rebbe says it means the inner part of the Rego. So in the Rego, we said the Rego in general school also. That was done, and that was able to pick up the Ma. Because it was all the high levels of losing the Ma, losing that Bittal. Whereas Don was getting that bittel. But we see Asher is, is the Pnimish of a bittel. What is Pnimish of a bittel? Yishem Shemach Ne Don. Boif and Kali, Hishbiya Gamal Kol Bnei Yisrael. Cannot just like Don affected all other Jewish people. Ha'kam Shev Asher, B'miuchad, Hishbiya Al Kol Bnei Yisrael. Kamu L'Gabi Asher. Like we see by Asher, Yiyye Ratzi Echav. He'll be wanting to be friendly by everyone who will love Asher. But he also helps everyone. Razal V'Farshim Shem. See big mother in the sharp and he saw in the year of Shmita, he had so much, but he gave Asher, the tribe of Asher had enough to give for everyone else. That's why that's why he's very beloved. He cared about everyone else. It's a Kesha Shabin Shbas Shavit Asha the Bin Shina Shmita. So what's the connection between between Shmita and Asha? So we're saying that Asha in the year of Shmita had enough to give everyone in shed everyone. But we're not going to be able to finish this, unfortunately, because it's a long What does it say in the past? We say, what is it going to be? What are we going to eat? So the question is, why was Asha the one able to? To have plenty in the year of Shmita versus everyone else that needed help. Why was Asher the one being Mashpia to everyone else? You know, Shmita, so I think we're going to stop. I, like, uh, I don't want to continue. And just, we'll go stuck in the middle. But yeah, anyway, so just to finish it off, <coughs> so what we learned this week, the 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 mask of the Haskell, the, the practical takeaway from this week's share is all about, we talked all about. Also, and we learned that Kabbalah doesn't mean doing something I don't like and force myself to do it, which maybe expresses itself that way. But Kabbalah means I'm thinking about Hashem. The Kabbalah soul is not about me, it's about the other person. And, and ultimately, it comes out with Kabbalah soul because, because what do I want? I want to sleep in. I want to go uh, play uh, whatever, whatever face I want to do. But I say, you know, I, there's there's a, there's a neighbor still there's a god and I'm and he's in charge and he has things he needs for me to do so let me go do it you know when you go to work you have kabbalah so you can't just say I'll do what I want or you're in a marriage you know and kabbalah so is a healthy thing it's a foundational thing that's what we've said it's a foundational thing without kabbalah so even in a relationship let's say or even term it even if it's good that's what I was saying and I said your person could dive in and learn. Meaning we could be doing the best of things and, and outside, externally, we look beautiful. But that Kabbalah so you, you lack everything. I'll just uh, finish up with a quick story, a little bit of an intense story, but uh, so years ago, this was many years ago, and I was in Yeshiva in, uh, in Melbourne, I had a Ferengan with the, the head of the seminary, of the girls' seminary. It was his uh, anniversary, I think it was, and he made a Ferengan. It's so one of the things he said to us. So it's a Chabad seminary. A lot of people probably know about it. It's called the uh, And so he was ringing, and he said there was a girl there that was non Lubavitch. I don't know how she got to that seminary, but there's Lubavitch seminary. But she was there, and she was very from she all the right things, and she was always. So the girls are complaining. The Lubavitch girls are complaining to him 
Now, like, it's so, like, it's weird. You say we learn chassidus, it's only, you know, we're all holy on chassidus, you know, chassidus, it's a, we have more yesh Hashem and things like this. And meanwhile, Mitamal, this girl, she looks much, much more from than us. What's going on? So he said, you know, he thought about it, like, it's, it's she, they've got a point. It's, it's, it is, it's interesting. What's, what's going on over here? So he goes, hey, let me ask us. He said, he said this girl, like, you know, I noticed you're very from, you do all the right things and it's, it's beautiful. Like, where, where does it come from? Like, how did you get this? So she said something sh- like shocking. That, like, when I heard it, I said, I heard it. But, like, now when I think about it, it's like, it's hard even to believe. She said to him, like this, she goes, if God is really true, if it's true that there's a God and he exists, so I want to make sure to do the right thing. And he was like, what? <laughs> so she's like, yeah. As if she explained to him, she was very honest. Very she didn't even realize and he was blown away. And basically he said, yeah, maybe she looks good. Like we were saying in the Sikha. You know, maybe a person davens and learns. Why is it davening and learning? It's gishmak. It feels good. But but what's the connection to the Hashem? Totally no connection. And in, in this her case, she's not really connected to Hashem. She doesn't even believe in Hashem. She doesn't even show up. Hashem really exists. It's like coming to, imagine coming to a relationship. Chas Shalom should never happen. It's not a relationship. And they say, if the relationship works out, so I better be a good wife. What? And and this is sort of the point. Yeah, we might not always be the perfect person. We don't always have Kabbalah soul. We don't always do the mitzvahs properly. But but the foundation of Kabbalah soul is that there's an, there's, an, there's Hashem, and I need to serve Him. And this is very this is the this is the takeaway. We have to realize in in relationships, in a husband and wife specifically, and 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 specifically with us and Hashem, is our relationship based off what we have a gishmak in. I enjoy davening. Let's say. So, ah, davening, I'm going to daven. But when it comes to other mitzvahs, ah, it's like I have to bench. It's a hassle, really. So, yeah, it could be, okay, 100% it could be a hassle for you. It could be something that you struggle with. Everyone has the thing they struggle with. But, but, but you say to yourself, not, why do I have to bench? And, and give yourself excuses. You say, hey, Hashem needs me to bench. Why am I, why am I benching? Because Hashem needs me to bench. Why am I davening? Am I davening because it's a gishmak? You say, it's nice to have a gishmak. But, yeah, but before we daven, we say, hey, I'm davening because Hashem needs me to daven. Hashem has his desire that I should daven, I'm going to daven. And that's what we should do when she comes to everything in a relationship, even in a relationship with husband and wife. Why do I do these things? Because we are, we are one. We are one. We are part of one soul. We are two halves of the whole together. And this is why I do it. Ah, it's gishmak. It's very good. And, this, and say, hey, and I'm so fortunate that this is enjoyable. But if we do that, then we do everything successfully because it's not based off what we have in enjoyment versus, and if we don't, then there's not going to be done, versus it's all the right thing that's going to be done. Have an amazing Shabbos, everybody, and uh, we'll be continued next week.